What is going on, everyone? John Kelly here from FightNumbers.com. We are back for another UFC card, UFC Vegas 2. That is the official hashtag for this weekend, in case you were wondering. What up, Raul? Shout out to you in the chat. Um, yeah, so hopefully we had a good uh, UFC um, card last weekend. Crusader, what's going on, Brett? Um, yeah, so hopefully you guys were able to cash a couple bets. I know it wasn't the strongest performance for me, at least, on the DraftKings side. So definitely hoping to bounce back this week. I think, you know, I, I put it out on Twitter. Sometimes, you know, people kind of talk smack about these these not very good cards because we have a week main event and a week overall card. But a lot of times these are the, the type of slates where we have the biggest edges. And I kind of was... Wasn't really feeling the card until I dug into things. And I actually, I, I really like this from a DraftKings perspective. I'm not just saying that. I just think a lot of, of people aren't going to know what to do with so many lesser known fighters um, with, with basically no big names on the card. So I'm excited this week. Um, definitely going to hop right into it. I think that's all the announcements that I have. If you didn't already, go check out uh, at Peter Overzet on Twitter. Go check out his Twitter stream. Uh, we hung out. Uh, me, Bobby Gomes, him, Brian Hooper, Osimo, um, Peter Jennings came on real late. So we we just hung out for the fights and uh, talked fights, kind of bs a little bit. It was pretty funny. It was a lot of fun. Hopefully we'll do that again in the future. But if you didn't check it out, go to uh, Pete Overzet's Twitter and check that out. That is all the announcements that I have. Uh, Raul says, John, send me tickets. Yeah, we'll see, man. I don't know. We, we got to see. If, if people are, are really... Uh, asking for it in the chat maybe i'll get a little friendly for that uh 15 dollars 100k to first place we'll see but that is it for the announcements portion we can get right into it after this sweet intro this is the fight numbers podcast with your host john kelly all right so the first Fight up on the card is going to be, um, yeah, a couple fights got moved around here, but I believe the first fight up on the card is going to be Anthony Ivy versus Christian Aguilera. No relation to Christina. I did look that up because, um, you know, he, he sort of, I guess, looks like they could be related and very similar name. I, I just thought the people might want to know there is no relation between those two, um, but Anthony Ivey comes in as the minus 195 favorite. We'll go ahead and pull up best fight odds, see if that moved at all. Yeah, minus 190 favorite. The comeback on Aguilera is plus 165. This fight not to go to decision is minus 265. So right off the bat, we have a fight that um, Vegas is definitely expecting a finish here, which means the winner should score well. And on this fight, you know, I kind of think there's a lot of decisions um, not, not so much early on. So these early fights, I think are, are definitely going to be the favorites to, um, to score well. So it's definitely going to be a fight that we want to target. Um, this was basically Anthony Ivy was signed as a short notice replacement last week when Ian Heinish originally thought he couldn't fight his corner men tested positive. They turns out it was a false positive. So Heinish was able to fight, which ended up destroying my night. With that first round finish so um all, everything about that just absolutely screwed me but basically the ufc still signed anthony ivy so now they're like well we got to give him a fight what do we do so they signed christian aguilera who's making a short notice ufc debut on the other side and basically you know this is a really low level fight ivy's the former wxc welterweight champion he's on a five fight win streak he does have some power he's got some okay wrestling chops but Still needs some work overall. Like I said, it's it's a low-level fight. But his opponent, Aguilera, is on a two-fight win streak. He's a decent boxer himself, and he's a pretty good wrestler. I think the wrestling advantage is definitely um, on Aguilera's side. That's probably the only advantage. I definitely favor Ivy's stand-up and his power, although I don't think it's like that drastic. Um, Aguilera has been knocked out four times in his professional career. All of those came in the first round. So I think that's why we see such a strong inside distance line on Anthony Ivy here. It was minus 110 when I checked yesterday. Uh, we'll see if that moved. Yeah, minus 115. 
So see, we've seen a little movement on Anthony Ivy, but that's a pretty strong inside distance line, especially for a newcomer. Um, but it makes sense, right? Like Aguilera has been knocked out four times um, and Ivy has power. He's, he's has a few knockouts on his record. So that's definitely what Vegas is expecting. But I also think it's kind of like, hey, this guy's knocked people out. This guy's been knocked out. I feel like it's kind of, um, everybody's going to kind of look at it and just think it's like the obvious lock. I wouldn't go so far. You know, like I said, it's a low, low level fight. I wouldn't be shocked if Ivy got knocked out. I know he's never been knocked out in his career, but he was rocked in his last fight in that WXC um, title fight against, I think, Willis Willis Brown, or I forget the guy's name, but he had him rocked early on. So it's not like he's indestructible. And again, it's just it's a low level fight. The pick is Ivy by knockout, uh, but I think uh, v- the line's a little bit out of control. So I am going to have pieces of both sides with a, a slight lean towards Ivy. But at 9K, he really needs that first round finish. Whereas Aguilera, you know, if he gets a bunch of takedowns, um, he's cheap enough to where he can pay it off in a decision. So I'll have, I'll have sides of both, but the pick is Ivy by knockout. Definitely a fight that that we want to target, though, for sure. All right, next fight up on the card is going to be Derek Minner versus Jordan Griffin. Um, this one's going to be fun. You know, this is another one Vegas is expecting not to go to decision, minus 265, open at only minus 150. So clearly everybody's pretty much expecting a finish here. Um, and it's easy to see why Derek Minner, uh, basically all of his fights end in a finish. <laughs> uh, but Jordan Griffin comes in as the minus 165 favorite. The comeback on Minner is plus 145. Griffin is coming off the second round submission victory over TJ Brown. But honestly, I was a little disappointed in that performance. I was pretty big on him there. That was one of my biggest bets for that card. And he came through. He did win. I bet in money line he won by a submission. But... I mean, he, he kind of got dominated in the first round, bounced back a little bit in the second, and, and ended up choking out uh, TJ Brown. But overall, just not didn't really inspire a ton of confidence in me. Um, but I, I think I still lean Griffin in this matchup. He's a solid striker. He's a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And Minner is basically just a regional grinder. He fought Herbert Burns on Dana White Contender Series. He got submitted in the first round. More recently made his UFC debut against Grant Dawson. Got choked in the second round. Um, he comes from a college wrestling background. So he does have some decent wrestling. Very, very aggressive submission grappler. And... That's why he's he's basically always going for the finish, even if it cost him getting finished. So I would basically, you know, I think I, I put in my write-up, I, I basically, I compare him to as like the poor man's Tim Elliott, because you see a lot of similarities, both good wrestlers, both good grapplers, but they, they're overconfident in their grappling skills. So they'll go for these risky submissions that usually end up giving up some some position on the map because they're so confident that they're able to scramble out of that and that's really um kind of how i see minner you know he's always live for for an early sub but you know if the fight goes three rounds i don't expect him to be winning a lot of rounds if that makes sense so that's why i do lean griffin i expect him to have a significant advantage in the striking department he's a more technical fighter has more power than minner and where minner's you know kind of wild on the feet he throws in flurries and it's usually to to close that distance and initiate the wrestling and grappling but when he does that he usually leaves his chin pretty open and if he does that against a guy like griffin who's experienced enough and powerful enough i think it could be could be a problem um so it's been interesting to see a ton of money that's come in on the underdog since the open um because i think he opened at like two to one yeah plus 170 and immediately got to plus 250 and then basically all week has been coming down and it's now plus 145 so that's interesting because these guys have fought before um a few years back before they were in the ufc and griffin submitted him in the second round by armbar so i don't know it's it's kind of interesting that a lot of people are hopping on minner here he's not exactly a guy that I would trust. If you are going to bet him, I would bet him to win by sub because like I said, that's pretty much his only path. So in terms of DraftKings, you know, this is another one that I think either way, the winner is going to score well. And Jordan Griffin, I think is like 80, what is he at? 89, Jordan Griffin. Yeah, 89, Minner's at 73. So Jordan Griffin, 89, 
I don't love the price. You saw the win against TJ Brown where he did get a second round finish, didn't do much else beside that. besides that, only scored 78. So we kind of need that finish for him. Uh, BFOS04, what up in the chat? Uh, and whereas Derek Minner, you know, at 7,300, if he does get lucky and get that sub, um, preferably first or second round, you know, you're going to want to have him at 7,300, especially on a slate where uh, we might not see a lot of dogs win. So he's definitely going to be in the mix for me in terms of an underdog that can score really, really well. Official pick is, uh, I, I don't think I gave the official pick. Official pick is Griffin by submission. Like I said, that's how it, it, it ended up happening the first time these guys fought. And because Minner has a tendency to put himself in bad spots, um, that's kind of my thought process there. All right, next fight up on the card is going to be Zarik Adeshev versus Tyson Nam. Uh, this one is a replacement fight. This was originally supposed to be um, Ryan Benoy, and he had to pull out. So Zaruk Adeshev comes in on short notice. The fight is a dead pick him here. Um, which is disappointing because I know for a fact Adeshev opened as a dog. Yeah, plus 175. Look at that. Look at that line movement already. The fight was announced like four hours ago. And I knew I should have bet it before I hopped on stream. And I I didn't. And it was like, uh, yeah, plus 100 or plus 110, something like that. Now it's a uh, dead pick em. So, uh, yeah. So I'm going to get into why I agree with that line movement. Uh, like I said, Aside from it being a short notice replacement for Adeshev, he's he's only got four professional fights. He's on a three fight win streak over in Bellator. Two of those came by knockout. He's a southpaw. He's got an exciting fighting style. He has decent power, decent wrestling, um, but he just he fights an exciting game plan. And he's another guy that if he thinks he has his op- opponent hurt, then he's going to go for the finish. And that's what I really like to see, especially against a guy like Tyson Nam, who's been knocked out multiple times, not at the UFC level, but he's 36 years old. Uh, he's, he's taken some damage over the course of his career. And even though he stayed alive during his two UFC fights, um, there's no saying that that chin's still going to hold up um, against Adeshev, who's going to be, you know, he's, he's going to be coming at him. And Tyson Nam, you know, he's 0-2 in the UFC. He's coming off the decision loss to Kai Car France back in February. Obviously, he's more experienced, but he hasn't given us much to think about in terms of what he's done at the UFC level. You know, um, he just doesn't throw enough. I I think Adeshev's just going to be the more active striker on the feet. I see him as the more overall well-rounded fighter, despite the lack of experience. And where Nam does have a little bit of power, he just doesn't throw enough volume to really threaten with anything. So give me the newcomer, Adeshev. And if you're going to bet him, like I said, do it ASAP because, you know, literally four hours ago, not even, when I wrote this up, he was plus 120. Um, in my write-up, that's what I have him at, and it's already minus 115 pick him. So if you got him at the open, congrats, because that's an awesome bet. Um, before the lines were posted um, was when I, I looked at this fight, and and I was looking at it, and I'm like, okay, I'm I'm for sure going to be taking Adeshev here. I'm just hoping he, come, he uh, opens up as an underdog, and he did. Uh, like I said, I just didn't didn't get to bet it, unfortunately. But hopefully you guys, you guys did. I still think it's a pretty solid bet because, like I said, I'm I'm just basically completely off Tyson Nam. Uh, lands at one of the lowest rates in the UFC. Scores under 1.5 fantasy points per minute. Um, I just have no interest there. Let's see if they... Did they price Adeshev yet? Benoit was at 8,200. So I don't know if they're just going to stick him... Uh, no, they didn't. Oh, okay. That's important. He's only 7,700. So even if he doesn't get a finish, he's, he's going to be a pretty strong play for me. So that's another underdog, technically an underdog that, uh, that I think can score pretty well here. I'm surprised they did that. I thought maybe they'd stick him at, at 8k and Tyson Nam at 82, something like that. But I guess, I guess because they did the pricing when Nam was still a favorite, and they just left Nam at 8, 8K. I guess it makes sense that they wanted Adeshev cheaper, but I like that price a lot at 7,700. All right, next fight up on the card is going to be Julia Avila, Avale, however you say it, versus um, Gina Mazzani. 
Um, and Avila comes in as the biggest favorite on the card. Minus 525 now. This is another one. You know, we've seen a few lines this week just get absolutely crushed. This is one of them. Look at this one. 245 at the open. Immediately down to 435. And then basically has been steamed ever since. Now 525. And she also has a strong inside distance line. It looks like the knockout prop dropped recently because I looked earlier. So yeah, that's going to be a bet for me. Plus 130 by knockout. Her inside distance line is minus 140. That's moved as well. It was minus 115 earlier today. Opened at plus 145. So that's another significant line movement there. And Avila is not a grappler, really. I mean, she's okay, but she has some power. So I think the knockout prop should be a little bit closer to what the inside distance line is. So I see a decent amount of value on that. I'll be adding that to my favorite bets. Um, I didn't have it originally because, uh, like I said, the props weren't dropped when I capped this fight. But I definitely uh, can see why Avila is the big favorite here. She's a strong boxer. She's got good power. She's good in the clinch. Um, and she has a pretty strong ga- gas tank. She kept up a pretty, you know, a really high debut against Panny Kianzed in her debut. And she didn't really gas at all. So, she, And the other thing I like about her is like, um, Adeshev, like I said, she knows when to go for the kill shot. She's not afraid to throw in in combinations, you know, when she smells blood in the water, which is always something I like to see. I talk about it every single week, you know, when because there's there's definitely some fighters out there that don't have that killer instinct and you're just screaming at your TV like, go, you have them hurt, you have them hurt, push, and they just don't for whatever reason. So I always, always like to see it when when fighters do have that that killer mentality in terms of knowing when to go for the finish. And I think Avila has that. Um, and I just think, you know, she she basically beats Mizani everywhere the fight goes. Mizani was one in three in the UFC and had just one fight since leaving the UFC. And it was against a 44-year-old can, basically, on the regional scene. And she submitted her in the first round. So after that, I guess the UFC was like, this is awesome. We got to get her back in the octagon uh, to fight. Uh, Julia Avila and probably get knocked out so like I said I just see Avila having every advantage here she has the strong inside distance line Uh, you're gonna pay for her on DraftKings but Avila by knockout is the official pick I am expecting a finish here I know she's the most expensive fighter on the card and that's where you're gonna have to make some decisions at 9300 Um, you know she did get a knockdown in her debut but uh, didn't score well in terms of if she's going to be priced up like that. So we really do need a finish from her. And even though I expect it, there are other plays around her that are a little bit safer in my opinion, and we'll get to those, but she's definitely in the mix for me. All right, next fight up on the card is going to be Charles Rosa versus Kevin Aguilar. Kevin Aguilar comes in as the minus 185 favorite to come back on Charles Rosa's plus 160. This fight to go to decision is minus 190. So Vegas is expecting this to to see all three rounds here. I think the only way it doesn't is if Rosa catches him with a submission. That's um, pretty much his only path. Uh, So, um, but Aguilar, you know, he's on a two fight losing skid, but both of those losses came to Dan Ige. Most recently, um, got knocked out by Zabara Tukagov. That was back in February. Charles Rosa, we remember that name because he very recently got his ass beat and completely manhandled by Bryce Mitchell, where Mitchell had him in a twister like three times. Surprising that he didn't tap, but uh, basically just got dominated for 15 minutes. That was on UFC 249 card. It doesn't take long to see that that Rosa is not very comfortable on the feet. He wants to get this fight to the mat. He is a black belt in Brazilian Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. But against Kevin Aguilar, I don't know how successful he's going to be taking it to the mat. Um, Aguilar's takedown defense is 89%. When Aguilar fought Enrique Barzola a few years ago, um, Barzola struggled to take him down. And Barzola is a much, much better wrestler than Charles Rosa. So I kind of just see Aguilar, you know, stuffing the takedowns and getting the better exchanges on the feet. And that's really the way I see this one playing out. I don't think it's going to be a great fight to target. I think Charles Rosa is going to get frustrated 
by not landing the takedowns and he's going to end up pulling guard a couple times just doing all that he can to try to get the fight where he wants it but in the end i don't think he's going to be very successful doing that so Aguilar by decision is the official pick, but I like the bet more than I like to play on DraftKings. Like I said, because you know, in Aguilar's wins, he does not score well, um, just doesn't mix in takedowns, doesn't land enough volume on the feet. So overall, um, it, it's really Rosa or Bust for me on DraftKings because he's another guy who, if he wins, although it's unlikely, it's probably coming by a submission in the first or second round. So. Um, I'll probably be betting Aguilar, um, betting him to win by decision, and then just full fading him on DK with with uh, some small exposure to Charles Rosa. All right, next fight up on the card. Or wait, we got uh, Ninja Warrior 360 said, I mean, Rosa was out striking Shane Burgos before he got knocked out. I don't know if he was out striking him. It, he was putting up a decent fight. Um, and Burgos is a really good boxer too, uh, but he, you know, against Kevin Aguilar, I just I don't really see it. But I mean, if if you do, by all means, feel free. I think Rosa is pretty much dead on the feet, especially uh, in his last two fights. He's he's looked real bad. So I'm I'm going Aguilar, Aguilar by decision. But like I said, I will have have shares of Rosa, just sort of hoping that he gets the fight to the mat where he wants it. Next fight up, Mar- Maria Agapova versus Hannah Cyphers. Hannah Cyphers making a quick turnaround here. Uh, but I'm, I, and you know, before I even get into it, I wanted to be on Hannah Cyphers here. She used to train at the gym in North Carolina that I trained at at different times. She trained there before I did. But some of the people that I met there um, are friends with her. You know, I'm rooting for her. It's just, I don't, these. The, the matchups that she's been getting have not been the best. And now because she just had a quick finish, um, she got finished quickly by Mackenzie Dern, uh, took no damage, basically just got heel hooked in the first round. She wanted to turn around here quick. And basically she's moving up a weight class now to take on UFC newcomer Maria Agapova. So right off the bat, I was like, okay, yes, we'll probably get um, some value on Cyphers uh, because she's lost a few in a row. And then I looked at who she was fighting. I didn't recognize the name. And then I I looked back and I realized Agapova is the one that fought Tracy Cortez on Dana White Contender Series. And she's a good fighter. She's young. She trains at American Top Team. She's improving with every fight. She lost that fight to Tracy Cortez, but she looked pretty good. The only reason she lost was because Cortez is such a better wrestler and grappler that once she implemented that, that game plan, Agapova really couldn't didn't have much for her and that is the only loss of Agapova's career and that's really kind of the only way to beat her at this point and Hannah Cyphers just does not have the wrestling or grappling pedigree to be able to do that and to be able to control Agapova on the mat not only is she moving up a weight class but she's also gonna have an eight inch reach disadvantage Agapova is very tall and lanky and I mentioned Cypher's moving up. She's small at her current weight division. So now she's moving up. It, and I mean, she's she's jacked. Don't get me wrong. She has power. But it's just that I see Agapova as being the more well-rounded fighter. And as you can see, um, public money and sharp money, it seems like all the money seems to agree that Agapova is looking good here. Open at minus 160, now minus 245. But that's basically what it comes down to for me. Like I said, Agapova lost to Tracy Cortez. Since then, she rebounded nicely with a first round submission victory, followed by a first round knockout in October. And like I said, she's she's young, but she's always improving. You know, when you have young fighters that may not have a ton of experience, but they train at such a good camp like American Top Team, you want to be early on those type of fighters because they're making improvements by leaps and bounds. And against Hannah Cyphers, who's basically just a one-dimensional boxer and not even a great boxer at that, yeah, maybe she she hurts her a little bit and ha- has a few moments on the feet. But overall, I just think Agapova, you know, with, with the reach advantage and just being the more well-rounded fighter, um, it, the pick is Agapova. And the pick is Agapova by decision, but I think she could even be live for another finish. And as, as um, unfortunate that is for Hannah Cyphers, that's kind of just the way I see it playing out. 
B Fosso Four says Agapova in the 8K range or 9K. I believe she's upper 8K. This one was just priced. Yeah, so she's 8,700. So kind of need that finish. I would I would like to get a finish pay, pay, paying up that at 8,700. Doesn't mean she can't. You know, if the decision stays high paced for three rounds, then she could pay it off, especially if she lands a takedown or two. Yeah, 87. Thank you, Brett, in the chat. Um, so yeah, um, the pick is Agapova sh for sure. I, I don't like the bet because like I said, I do think Cyphers is being a little bit undervalued here um, just because, you know, Agapova is brand new. Minus 245 is a lot to lay. I wouldn't bet Cyphers, but I just think the line is too much to bet Agapova. And that is it for the main card or for the prelims. Moving on to the main card, we have Jordan Espinosa versus Mark Bumblebee De La Rosa. Um, this one is sort of like the Aguilar fight, I guess, um, in that I kind of see it playing out in two different ways. Either Espinosa wins a low scoring decision or De La Rosa catches him and submits him. And this fight to go to decision is minus 195. Neither guy has a very strong inside distance line. Espinoza is coming off back-to-back -back losses where he was submitted in the very first round. So obviously that's the clear path to victory for a black belt like Mark De La Rosa who wants to get the fight to the mat. And De La Rosa himself, you know, he's on a three-fight losing streak. So and, and most recently got knocked out by Julian Paeva back in February. So while this fight plays out on the feet, I don't think either guy's a great striker. I expect Espinoza to have a slight advantage. You know, we know his game plan. He's quick. He likes to dart in and out of range, land a couple leg kicks. Doesn't land in volume, but he's quick. You know, quick getting out of range, especially against a guy like Mark De La Rosa, who does have the reach disadvantage here. So that we, we know what espinoza is going to do uh, especially you know he doesn't want to stay too close because if, if de la rosa can get him down um you know that's been espinoza's biggest weakness is against grapplers you know he tends to always get submitted uh but on the feet you know de la rosa does have at least a little bit of power in his hands when he does connect and his striking is looking a little bit better each time uh each time he's out there he trains out of factory x muay thai so He's not completely dead on the feet. I see this fight basically playing out in those two ways. It's either Espinosa avoids going to the mat and wins a low scoring de decision where he scores like 55, 60 points, which in that in that scenario, we, we don't want him at all. I think he's like 8,500 or something. Or De La Rosa is able to have a little bit of success on the feet or at least gain enough respect and then get the fight to where he wants him and, and possibly submit him on the mat. So the official pick is Espinoza by decision just because I think that outcome is a little bit more likely. But like I said, I have zero interest on DraftKings. He's never been a high-volume guy, does not score well in his wins, and at 8,500, I, I just really want no part of him. Um, only win in the US, UFC was Eric Shelton, who I think is a bum. Scored 59 points in that fight. And then, like I said, got submitted in the first round in his other two. So Espinosa is going to be a full fade for me. And I will put uh, Mark De La Rosa in that Charles Rosa category where, um, you know, if he wins, I think it comes by a sub. I don't have a ton of confidence that he wins. So I'll, I'll mix him in if I'm playing 10, 10 or more lineups. All right, next fight up on the card is going to be a little more fun than the previous. It's going to be Andre Touchy Feely versus Charles Air Jordan. I'm trying to mix in nicknames more. I had a few people tell me they love the nicknames. So I I know most of them. I just usually don't, don't put them in my write-up. So if I remember to, I'm going to start giving the nicknames because I know... I know a few got a few of you guys love the nickname. So Andre Touchy Feely versus Charles Air Jordan. Feely comes in as a pretty sizable favorite here. Um, let's see if it moved at all. It was at 225 earlier today. Yeah, 225. The comeback on Jordan is plus 185. This fight to go to decision is minus 160. And the inside distance line for both fighters, Feely is plus 325. And Charles Jordan is plus 285. So a better inside distance line for Jordan. And it looks like money's been coming in on, on that inside distance line as well. 
But yeah, I think this one's an interesting matchup. You know, I'm kind of a, an Andre Feely fan. He's coming off a decision loss to Sadiq Youssef back in January where I thought he looked pretty good. I thought you can make an argument that he won the fight. I'm not crying about it because it was so close that I'm not going to be mad if you gave it to uh, Sadiq Youssef. But Sadiq Youssef is one of the the best like up-and-comers in the 145 division. And Feely beat him in round one. And he outstruck him in round three. So that's saying something. You know, Feely isn't a slouch when it comes to the striking. And Charles Jourdain, you know, these guys are going to, they're going to trade on the feet. He's coming off a big second round knockout over Du Ho Choi last December where he came through as a pretty big underdog. He's a southpaw. He loves to bang. He's always looking to throw that flying knee, which I'm assuming is how he got the nickname Air Jourdain. <laughs> But um, he attempted it a couple times against Desmond Green in his UFC debut and multiple times against Du Ho Choi where he landed it a couple times. I mean, I didn't count, but he literally threw it at least two or three times against Green and probably like four or five times against Du Ho Choi. So he loves that flying knee. He's always looking for that flying knee. So it's going to be something that Philly has to watch out for. But overall, I think Philly's just a little bit more technical and the better all-around fighter. Because whereas the striking, I think, could be pretty even with a slight edge to Philly, it's really the wrestling that I think um, give Philly a pretty big advantage here, along with having uh, the you know long UFC experience. So I think, you know, it's going to be pretty even on the feet, slightly towards Feely, but I think we can see him landing multiple takedowns here. And I think that's really going to be the difference in what secures him the rounds. So Feely by decision is the official pick. And as long as it's plus money, I like that bet. You know, I know Vegas is kind of expecting a finish here because Charles Jourdain is a finisher. I believe the only fight um, that he lost was the one that went to decision. So it makes sense that he has a strong inside distance line. He's a live dog, but I'm on the other side. I like Andre Feely, um, and it looks like that line moved. It was plus 115 earlier. Now it's down to minus 105. It's still a pretty solid bet, um, but maybe wait a little bit, see if it comes back to plus money on Andre Feely by decision. All right, next fight up on the card is going to be Marab Devalishvili versus Ray Borg. Um, Devalish Philly comes in as the second biggest favorite on the card. Um, he is at minus 420. The comeback on Ray Borg is plus 335. This fight to go to decision is minus 300. Neither guy really has a strong inside distance line. Devalish Philly plus 420. Borg plus 515. Um, but the good thing about these guys is usually even in a, in a decision, they do enough wrestling and grappling to where they score well. And Devalish Philly's coming off the unanimous decision victory over Casey Kenny back in February. He landed 12 takedowns in that, scored like 130, broke the slate like he tends to do. Uh, Ray Borg is coming off the split decision loss to Ricky Simon on May 13th. But let's be honest, split decision, I thought it was a unanimous. Ricky Simone pretty much dominated him. I'm not really sure how it was a split, but either way, um, I think this fight is pretty straightforward. You know, Devalish Billy is nicknamed the machine for a reason. And I just really have to back him in this matchup. I think he's the better version of Ray Borg. He lands almost three times as many strikes per minute on the feet. He lands almost double the takedowns per 15 as Ray Borg. And where Ray Borg's an excellent wrestler and decent grappler, Devalish Billy is just better. He doesn't have the strength. He doesn't have the strength or the cardio to be able to keep up with the pace of Devalish Philly. So I'm on Devalish Philly here. It's no secret. The guy has cardio for days. He leads the bantamweight division in fantasy points per minute at 4.52, which is the second highest in the UFC across all weight divisions. Second only to my girl Tatiana Suarez at 4.57. So um, we know even, even in a decision, it does not matter. On average, you know, he's scoring... A lot, you know, a hundred points in a decision is really good. So even against a guy like Ray Borg, I think we see a bunch of takedowns here, and I favor him on the feet as well. So Devalish Philly by decision is the official pick. Very strong play on DraftKings at ninety two hundred, and that that's what I was kind of getting at before. You know, Avila ninety three hundred. We're gonna have to make some decisions because it, it can be kind of difficult to play her and Devalish Philly. 
And I just think he's the safest play on the board at 9,200. Like I said, against Casey Kenny back in February, he scored 131. Brad Katana, uh, Terry and Ware, those were both decisions, scored over 90 points in those. Um, lost against Frankie Signs and Ricky Simone, but he scored 71 and 79 in a loss. So like I said, safest play on the board and probably the most upside as well. So I'm going to be very heavy on Marab, the machine, the Volishvili. All right, up next, we got the co-main event, Marvin, the Italian dream, Vittori versus Carl, I forget his nickname, Roberson. I thought, I thought I'd remember all of them. I do not. Um, I apologize. On If anybody knows Carl Roberson's nickname, uh, throw it out in the chat just so we have it. But Marvin Vittori is coming as the minus 230 favorite. The comeback on Carl Roberson is plus 190. Uh, Vittori is coming in on a two-fight win streak. And most recently, that decision win against Andrew Sanchez last October. Roberson is also on a two-fight win streak, coming off a third-round submission victory over uh, Roman Kopilov in November. And this matchup is is pretty interesting to me. Not only what were these guys supposed to fight a couple weeks ago, Roberson had a tough weight cut, got sick or whatever, had to pull out. You guys probably all saw the video, Marvin Vittori in the hotel lobby screaming his head off at Carl Roberson. Why don't you fight me? Uh, fight me right here. Flipping out. It was, it was pretty intense. Um, don't know if it was the best PR move for Marvin Vittori. But like they say, any press is is good press, right? Isn't that what they say? Um, but yeah, you know, in terms of the matchup, uh, like I said, I think it's interesting because where both of these guys are talented fighters, neither of them are really a big name in the sport. So Roberson, you know, he's not been he's been known to to kind of brawl, and he's been improving with his grappling every time out. Um, we're seeing a little bit of improvements, however. This is a really, really tough matchup for him. I, I like Marvin Vittori. I think he's a really good fighter. He does all the same things as Roberson, except he just does them a little bit better. And what I mean by that is, you know, neither fighter is super active on the feet, but but Vittori has a slight edge in that department, um, just under four significant strikes per minute. Uh, when it comes to the grappling, Vittori is a brown belt, so he's the better grappler. Uh, and where I don't, I don't really expect Roberson to have the strength to control him on the mat. And Vittori, if he even gets it there, because Vittori, um, right around 80% takedown defense, um, he's he's pretty good in that department, and he's just the stronger, uh, bigger wrestler. So I think it'll be somewhat competitive, but the pick is Vittori. I think he outstrikes him, and he proves that he's the stronger wrestler and the better grappler in this matchup. The problem is he's priced at 8800 which makes it kind of tough for him to outperform that salary unless he gets a finish. So I don't love him in terms of DraftKings. He's another one of those guys um, that, you know, probably expecting a finish. High floor, low upside type guy. So he'll be in the mix. Uh, not my favorite play. I like the bet. Uh, Marvin Vittori by decision. I think that one is still plus money. If you guys want to jump on that, I'm probably going to here in the next hour or so. Um, let's see if it's still... Oh, it moved minus 120. Sorry. Man. We are behind a lot of these lines. Yeah, it was plus 100 earlier. Now it's minus 120. Still a pretty pretty good bet, though, because like I said, I think uh, I think this one could go back and forth for a bit. I wouldn't be surprised to see it end in decision. All right, that brings us to the main event, which is going to be Jessica I versus Cynthia Calve Calveo. And basically, nobody is excited about this main event. I kind of am. Now that I looked into it, and the only reason why I'm excited is because I'm on the underdog here who's cheaper on DraftKings. So, and I think, you know, at least a decent amount of people are going to play Jessica I, and I am I have pretty much zero interest in doing that. I think she's going to be pretty popular. So that's a reason why I, I like this slate quite a bit. Um, but basically the, the fight opened up with, with Calvillo as a slight favorite at minus 130, but the line flipped. And Jessica I was a slight favorite on some books. Now other books have it as at a dead even pick them. But like I said, I'm definitely on Calvillo in this one. I'm surprised she isn't the favorite. She's coming off a draw against Marina Rodriguez back in December, which is I thought was a pretty terrible decision. I thought she clearly won round round one and round three. I put um I put the scorecards up on Twitter earlier today if you want to take a look at it. But watching it live, um, I thought it was 
you know, a bad decision. But then when I watched it again today and then actually looked at the scorecards, it was was one of the worst um, ripoffs I've ever seen, basically. It, it was pretty bad. But I, I'm on Calvillo here. She's she's a strong wrestler, a strong grappler. Her only loss professionally came against Carla Esparza back in 2017. And what does Carla Esparza do? She's a strong wrestler and a decent grappler. So uh, basically, I just don't think Jessica I has those skills. And whereas on the feet, maybe I has a little bit of an advantage. I think it'll be pretty even. I think the clear advantage comes when when we talk about the wrestling and the grappling because I's given up multiple takedowns in most of her fights especially when she faces any type of wrestling opponent so her takedown defense like 56 percent it's really bad so basically I just expect even though Calvillo is moving up a weight class here um and I think that's why we're getting such a good price on her I think if this was um you know if uh this was her normal weight class I think she might be like a minus 140, minus 150 favorite. And I, I would probably even bet that because I've never really been a Jessica I fan. I've, I've always kind of thought that she's she's been a little bit overvalued. She never really impressed me. You know, she came to the UFC, one, only one of her first seven fights and then took some time off, comes back, puts together a little three fight win streak where she didn't really beat anybody. She beat Caitlin Chikage into an ugly split decision that I don't even know if she won. And then she gets a title shot. So I, I don't think she should have ever got a title shot. I don't think she's she's at that level. And because I just see a massive, massive advantage for Cynthia Calvillo when it comes to the wrestling and the grappling, and because that's such a clear weakness for Jessica I, um, I I'm on Calvillo here for sure. Calvillo by decision is the official pick. She's only 7.9K on DraftKings. So I like the bet because it was plus, we'll see if it moved because a lot of these lines are moving. Um, plus 200 is what I saw earlier. No, it's still plus 200. So that's a pretty strong bet for me at plus two to one on Calvillo to win by decision because I think it is the most likely outcome. And when we talk DraftKings, you know, she's another one that is going to open up some salary for us. 7,900 um, and, you know, in that draw against Rodriguez scored 75 points. Three takedowns, seven advances um, against Courtney Casey, 71 points in a decision. Uh, Botello, she scored 117 with a first round sub. So, I mean, that wrestling and grappling could really pay off big, especially when we're getting her at such a cheap price tag. So even in a decision, she's going to be a pretty strong play for me as well. And and like I said, I just really don't have much interest in Jessica I. I don't think she's as good as the public does. And I think she's she's pretty um, outmatched in this matchup. And when you talk DraftKings, you know, 8,300, she never really scores a lot. You know, decent pace on the feet, but that's all she's doing. You know, she'll get about 40 to 50 points there at 8300 it's not going to do it um i know she has five rounds to work with but i just expect her to be on her back a lot and not able to be landing many uh points in that position so i'm on calvillo calvillo by decision is the official pick in that one all right some of my favorite bets i like adishav money line which at the time was plus 120 now it's a pick i'm at minus 115 i still think it's a decent bet um, not as good as when you're getting plus money, but, uh, like I said, I just think he, he's going to be more active than Tyson Nam. Um, and that's really what it comes down to. Um, maybe even live for a finish. Um, I like Aguilar by decision. Uh, that's minus 110. I like, uh, Andre Feely by decision. That's minus 105. I like Julia Avila by knockout, which is, what do we say? Plus 140 or something. The fact that we're getting plus money on that, I like that a decent amount um let's go check it out plus 130 okay so yeah as long as we're getting plus money i like that as well um devolish billy by decision that one we're gonna pay a little bit more that's was minus 180 um i'm fine with it especially mixing it into parlays because i think that is the most likely outcome i like marvin vittori by decision and i like cynthia calvillo that we just talked about by decision as well so a a few fighters here that I think is going to end in decision, but it doesn't mean that um, they can't score well on DraftKings. You know, I mentioned a, a few, Devalish Vili, Cynthia Calvillo. They're probably going to score well regardless of whether or not it's a, a decision or not. Um, and on the flip side, you know, 
like the Kevin Aguilar fight. If he loses, he's probably losing by sub. Jordan Espinoza, if he loses, he's probably losing by a sub. So just because I'm betting these guys to win by decision um, doesn't mean that um, you shouldn't at least have a little bit of exposure to the other side, even though um, I think that's the most likely outcome. Crusader2414 says, Vittori by decision on FanDuel is plus 100. Thank you, Brett. That is um, my main sports book. So I'm going to hit that while it's still plus money because like I said, I'm pretty confident that's the outcome. Um, So yeah, thank you for the shout out on that. But that wraps it up, guys. Um, Thank you for joining us. Uh, We we talked DraftKings pricing, uh, talked a couple bets that I like as well. Um, This one is going to go up on YouTube as per usual. I'll throw it up on fightnumbers.com. The homepage, I'll also have uh, DraftKings player rankings broken down by salary tier. tier. I'll have ownership projections and I'll have a line movement page as well. You can also find fantasy points per minute for everybody in every single weight division um, in the UFC. Um, Completely free. Check it out for sure. We uh, broke a record last week for the big uh, pay-per-view card. So I'm definitely thankful for that. I wish we could have, could have had a little bit better of a week. The bets were, the bets were pretty strong. It's just DraftKings um, got to get back on, back on a, a hot streak here. So I definitely appreciate it. Do me a favor, guys, before we get out of here, hit the like button on Twitch. Um, you would now have the opportunity to subscribe to me. If you have Amazon Prime, it's completely free. If you don't already subscribe to somebody, you get one uh, Twitch Prime sub per month with Amazon Prime. So if you're not using it, um, go ahead and give it to me because in the future, I'm going to be having um, some additional content for subscribers only. But aside from that, I'll, I'll do some subscriber only giveaways and you get this. If you look right now, if any of you guys are uh, current subs already, if you look in the chat, you'll get um, basically you'll unlock a new uh, emoji that nobody else is allowed to use. So I, it's like a little Conor McGregor one that I um, thank you, Ninja Warrior. Just subscribe by Twitch Prime. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, if you if you check out the chat and go to the emojis, there should be one at the bottom that has like john kelly dfs emotes and you'll see the ones that you just unlocked and basically it goes by tiers um so i'll be messing around with that i i haven't perfected it yet but um i I think it's just a cool feature that that twitch has that i think you guys will will like to use once uh once you subscribe and if you're watching on youtube we'll go ahead and do a giveaway this week on youtube go ahead and comment in the chat if you think i'm crazy for taking cynthia calvillo and being so confident on her over jessica i um then just say you're crazy um in the comment or call me a name or whatever whatever you see you know i can handle it um if you think i'm right then just uh say calvillo by decision and basically i'll do a giveaway 15 dollars ticket DraftKings, 100k to first place again this week like i said i know it's not the best card with all the big names uh coming from a pay-per-view that was pretty stacked and now we have a lot of unknown people but that's usually when we have the biggest edges. So good luck this week, guys. Um, and I will see you uh, next week. And if any questions come up between now and then, follow me on all social at John Kelly DFS. Appreciate it, guys. I'll see. You. Oh, and uh, Ninja Warrior just put the uh, McGregor emoji in the chat. Thank you. Yeah. So that's if if you guys want the picture, and I'll fix that because there shouldn't be a background. It should just be like the emoji of McGregor. So I'll fix that. Uh, for next week but if you see in the chat and you want to subs- uh, subscribe you'll unlock that awesome mcgregor emoji and in the future i'll do some funnier ones with me uh, making stupid faces and and cool stuff like that but thanks guys i'll get out of here and stop rambling good luck this week if you're playing golf good luck in that as well and i'll, I'll see you guys next time